Ecco. Good afternoon! Ayan, lapit naman kayo dito sa second row. Baka gusto nyong lumipat. Ayan. Ako pala si Ate Mel. So, for our game, we need 30. So, tatlong grupo. Sampu sa isang group. Okay lang ba? Ayan, Ashers, can you help us find the 10 people per group? Tatlo, tapos proceed na doon sa side for our game. Any volunteer? Ayan. Sa game na to, wala kayong talo. Nax. O sige. <laughs> Ayan. So baka naman, dahil ang ating mga student leaders, yes, sampu per group. So 30 heads. Uh, please find your uh, leader. Ayan. Oh, MCNP. Do the honor. Ayan, UCV. Okay. Oh, dagdagan nyo pa, mga ading. Two. Oh, sige na. Ah. Guys, etong game na to, wala kayong talo dito. Kaya sali na kayo. Yes, yes. Ayan. O, oh, na. Okay. Sali kayo. <laughs> okay, lipat na kayo dito, mga ading. Ayan. Sinong leader dito sa team? Ah, si Princess. Number two. Rian, ikaw daw. Binolunteer ka nila. Okay, sa group three. Guys, sampu-sampu to. Ashers, can you help me kung kompleto sila? Ayan, sampu na kayo. Dapat pantay yung number per group. Kung hindi man sampu, at least pantay yung numbers nyo. 2, 4, 6, 8. 6 lang to. 2, 4, 6. 7. 7. Uh, baka gusto nyong dagdagan pa. Ayan, 8. Ako lang pang dalawa. Ashlyn, ikaw na doon sa isa. Sino pang isa? Daf. Aalis na po yung jeep. <laughs> isa pa, isa pa. Isa na lang. Ay, sige. Sakto, hiwa, hiwalay, hiwalay. Tama? Okay. O, sige, please. Okay. Ayan, dahil mezo... Ayan. Masyado bang malapit? Pwede ba nating i-atras? Okay. Ito yung mechanics. Itong line po na to. Kuya. Ayan. So, ganito yung mechanics. Kunin nyo yung stick. Ayan. Alternate. Isang mahaba, isang maiksi hanggang dulo. Ayan. Alternate ha. Ayan. We trust na sa Every Nation Campus... With all honesty, tayong hahawak ng isang mahaba, isang maiksi. So, mauna yung mahaba dito sa side. And then, maiksi yung next. Yes. 
Okay? Guys, yung stick lang. Iwan nyo dito yung straw. Okay na? Lahat may stick na. Alternate. Yan, dapat nandito kayo sa loob ng seat. Huwag kayong lalampas sa likod na seat. Okay, kompleto, kompleto. Okay, listen. Ganito yung mechanics ng game. Ngayon, yung leader dito sa unahan, kukunin niya tong isang straw. And then, relay lang siya hanggang dulo. Iwan nyo dun sa upuan sa kabila. Pero ito yung twist. Isang hand lang yung pwede nyong gamitin. Bawal gamitin yung isang hand. So, kung dominant hand nyo is right, then right lang all the way. So, kailangan itong sampung straw na to makarating dun sa kabila, gamit yung tigi isang stick na hawak nyo. Bawal gumamit ng kabilang kamay. Yes. Kamay ang gagamitin, ha? Isa lang. Ha? Ayan, relay siya. So, pwede kayo mag-practice. Isa, isa lang. Practice yung una. Ayan, sa'yo manggagaling. Lapit ka dito. Sa may upuan. Okay? Ayan. Okay, nakuha nyo na yung, yung, ano, yung team. Okay, patong ulit sa upuan. Mga be, okay na. Start na tayo. Okay, let's start. Pabilisan lang to. Okay, in one. Asan na yung line nyo, honey, ng isang line? Yan. Okay, one, two, three, go. Okay, ushers, can you check dun sa dulo kung kompleto yung sampung straw na mai... Sampu yung straw na dadalhin. It's okay kung nine lang sila. Yes. As much as, as, as fast as you can. Yan. Yes, sampu yan. Sampu yung straw na ipapasa nyo. So, kaya nyo yan, mga be. Actually guys, itong larong to ulit. Ayan, itong larong to, tinuturuan namin kayo kung paano tumusok ng fishball sa, sa, ano, sa mga tabi-tabi. Kaya practice nyo na to. Ayan. Ito tag-tig-tigar-gar ditan. May salang nga ima to sa rinyo, ah. Isang kamay lang, ha. Isa. Wow, group one. Sino nang? Uy, group three. Grabe. Galing. Come on, high school. Ay, hindi. Kag Kagayan. Kagayan State University pala to. Bongga naman, may representative tayo from MCNP, from UCV, from CSU, and Cagayan High. Ayan, tapos sa mga medyo bandang likod, mga Louisian natin, grabe ah, sporty. O, oh, galaw-galaw, Jess. <laughs> Isipin mo, tusok yan ng karayom. Kumukuha, na, kumukuha ka ng dugo, ayan. Last na, yay! Okay, bantayan natin kung sinong mahaka unang puno sa dulo na upuan. Ilan na dito? Two, four, anim, five, okay, seven, group three, grabe naman, seven na agad sa dulo. Last na! Last na! Last na! Last na! Come on, guys! <laughs> Yay! Group 3! Okay. Okay, sige. Uh, ushers, you can give the prizes na sa ating mga... Students, ayan, sana nag-enjoy kayo sa ating laro. Ayun, okay. 
Wow, may pa-picture talaga. Sige. Salamat po, Every Nation Campus, sa ating Beng Beng Prize. Ayan, go, let's go back to your seats. Please go back to your seats na. And then, okay. Okay, so, yan, nakapag-settle na ba ang lahat? Okay, okay. Hinga, ayan, napagod ba kayo sa ating game? Nag-enjoy ba kayo? Wala, napagod sila, walang sumagot. <laughs> Come on, Jess, sana nag-enjoy ka. Tumusok ng stick, ah, joke lang. Nang straw pala, no, kasi straw yung tinusok. Anyway, I would like to invite everyone to stand. Let's read uh, Isaiah 43 verse 1. It says here, But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. You know, when we realize na it is God who have redeemed us, it is Christ who have paid the uh, price for us, we, we should not fear. Alam mo yun, when we fear the things that are to come, then we can rest on this verse na fear not. Unang dalawang word pa lang nung, nung sentence, fear not na agad. And then, this is our security that God have redeemed us and He had called you by name. God knows every one of us by name. That's why you are here. Why? Because God has called you to be here. And the three words that is sobrang malapit sa heart ko, ito yung lagi kong kinaklaim every time. The verse said that you are mine. We can rest assured Now, when we praise God, alam mo yun, when you know that God owns you, no holding back. When you praise God, you give your all, you give your voice, you, you raise up your hands. Di ba kahit medyo paos tayong kumanta, okay lang, wala tayong pakailam sa katabi natin. Why? Because when we worship, we worship with the one who owns us. And that is our confidence. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you, God, for this moment. God, I pray that every student right now, will experience your presence, will worship you in spirit and truth. And we thank you, God, for this opportunity to give you glory with our worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. creation Let's dance, we're caught up 
dropping a song of life. Your love's taking a by surprise. Nothing you do with size and team. You surpass all the wildest dreams. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What you've done, wonderstruck. God, your goodness has swept us up. Compelled by love, we tell the world about what you've done. Wonderstruck. God, your goodness has swept us up. Compelled by love, we tell the world. will know that your love is sweet this is light in the light of eternity let your joy overflow show while we believe get up on your feet let's dance we're caught up in your song of life your love's taking us by surprise nothing you do is as it seems you surpass all the wildest Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Son to die, adopted us from darkness into light. Now I am safe within your loving arms, and I can hear the yearning of your heart for the lost. It be Our hearts beat and beat and beat for the sons and daughters. For the lost, it beats, it beats, we can hear it calling. Make our hearts beat and beat and beat. The widow has a place before your throne For strong and deep and uncontainable Is your heart of love that beats for all the world oh, For the lost it beats, it beats, we can hear it calling Make our hearts beat and daughters for the lost it beats it beats we can hear 
Spirit calling. Make our hearts beat and beat and beat and beat with you. For the lost, for the lost, it beats, it beats. We can hear it calling. Make our hearts beat and beat and beat for the sons and daughters. For the lost, it beats. Calling, make our hearts beat and beat and beat and beat with you. Make our hearts beat, make our hearts beat with you. Make our hearts beat, make our hearts beat with you. Make our hearts beat. Make our hearts beat with you. Make our hearts beat. Make our hearts beat with you. For the lost, it beats, it beats, we can hear it calling. Make our hearts beat and beat and beat for the sons and daughters. For the lost, it beats, it beats, we can hear it calling. Make our hearts beat and beat and beat and beat with you. Now we say. Sons and daughters, for the lost it beats, it beats. We can hear it calling. Make our hearts beat and beat and beat and beat with you. Make our hearts beat and beat and beat and beat with you. Make our hearts beat. Sabi dun sa song, make our hearts beat with you. Now, this is my question. Have you experienced having the same heartbeat with God? Yung, yung may iyak ka kasi, God, ito din yung heart ko eh, yung heart mo. When you look at other people and see them the way God sees them, umiiyak din ba yung puso nyo? You know, you look around, pag pumasok kayo sa school, when you go home, when you see the people around the street, sa SM, sa Robinson, does your heart break for the loss as well? Why? Kasi, yun yung kinanta lang natin eh. God, make our hearts beat with you. Now, if not, then let's pray. You know, let's pray that God, gusto ko din, gusto ko din ito. Gusto ko din na yung, yung heart ko have the same heartbeat with you. Why? Kasi kung iba yung dinadesire natin apart from God, then we might be aiming for something that might hurt us as well. But when we have the same heartbeat with God, you know what? The passion comes, the love comes, forgiveness comes. Even, even the energy, the, the forgiveness, the, the patience to love people the way that it should be, the God way, you know what? It will just come out and flow out of you. Why? Because you have the same heartbeat with God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you that your heart for us, for the loss, for your children, for, for the students, for our families, 
Thank you, Lord, for showing us your heart today. And God, I pray that as we spend more time in your presence, we may have the same heartbeat with you. That this to us, Lord, that when we go outside, when we go home, we remember that, God, I want to have the same heartbeat with you. I want to see my parents the way that you see them. I want to see my classmates, my teachers, your teachers, even the people na hindi mo kilala. God, paano sila namumuhay nang wala ka? And you know what? Your heart will cry for it. Why? Because God had a heartbeat for them as well. The same way na, na God loves you the same way, ganun din yung ikakry out natin when we go out. And so God, I pray that these students, Lord, will have the same heartbeat with you and cry out for the loss as well. We thank you, God. We, we bring you back all the glory, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Yan, ang dami natin. Grabe. Alam nyo, pinagpapawisan pati yung mata ko sa sobrang init. <laughs> wow. Okay, sino dito yung mga high school? Taas ng kamay mga high school. Ayan, congratulations. Grabe, sana all. <laughs> Grabe, no? We thank you, government, for for really understanding the init ng Tugigaraw. Nagbabaga po yung emotion, tsaka yung passion, tsaka yung fire. Grabe, tuge talaga, no? Mainit. Anyway, ayan. So, ako si Ate Mel. Mainit na hapon, gabi. Gabi na pala. Ayan, mainit pa rin na gabi. Ayan, sinong mga nagpawis ang mata dito? Alam nyo, mainit talaga yung panahon, di ba? Ayan, so anyway, uh, you are in Every Nation Campus. Here in Every Nation Campus, we are passionate for leadership, integrity, faith, and excellence. So, sino dito yung mga first-timers natin? Pwede ba silang tumayo? Parang ang dami nating taga-CSU, ah. Ayan. First-timers. Anyone? Pwede po ba kayong tumayo yung mga first-timer natin? Wow! Palakpakan naman natin sila. Alam nyo, guys, kapag tumayo kayo, papasayawin namin kayo. Ay, so, <laughs> bakit umupo ulit sila, no? Ayan, from school, CSU, Andrews. Okay, CSU din, dalawa sa likod. Okay, ito, CSU Karig, and then yung dalawa. Grabe naman, CSU! 100%! <laughs> Ayan, congratulations pala no, sa mga pumasa. But anyway, we have the ball pens for you. We want to make this memorable for you so that uh, every time na magsusulat kayo, maalala niyong bumalik sa ating youth service. We know and we pray, we hope, na this will be your first times of many, many, many times pa. Ayan, so palakpakan naman natin yung mga nag-invite sa kanila. Ayan, tingin kung merong bakante sa tabi mo. You know what? It's a, uh, it's a sign na mag-invite pa kayo. Nax. And hello pala sa ating mga online viewers. We want to see you here then and enjoy and have games with us. Okay? So, anyway, uh, we are on our new series. Grabe. Alam nyo ba tong series na to? Favorite din namin to. Di ba, Janime? <laughs> anyway, So, yun. Grabe, pati ilong ko nagpawis. Ano? <laughs> We are on our series called Waves and Winds. So, at the end of the series, the student will realize, you students will realize that salvation belongs to God and that God sends His people to the exceedingly great cities and nations. Wow! Sino man yung mga passport dito, no? God will send you to cities and nations of our time to share His word. And this will lead them, lead us to have a conviction to preach the good news of Christ to our campuses and communities. So, hindi ko napapatagalin kasi yung preacher natin today, bigatin talaga to. I look up to this person. So, uh, habang umaakyat siya, baka pwede namang isang pasada lang ng happy birthday to you. Kasi katatapos lang ng birthday niya eh. And let's call Kuya Matthew itong paalan. One week na eh. 
<laughs> Hello, mas malapit yung birthday ni Kuya Ace. <laughs> Ayan, magandang hapon sa inyo lahat. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you guys for being here. Uh, sobrang uh, alam ko na yung iba sa inyo parang bitin na bitin pa rin. Yung kahit isang buong week yung binigay. Yung iba hindi buong week ang binigay ng school. Pero thank you today to, to all of you who are here, even to those who are online. Today we are going to start our brand new series called Waves and Winds. Ayan, grabe. Uh, today, I just like to ask you one question. Sino na dito yung natry nila maging part ng section or klase or even group project na ayaw nyo talaga yung mga kasama nyo? Sino na dito natry? <laughs> Ayan, nagsitaasang, walang hesitation. Natry nyo na, di ba? <laughs> Lahat tayo dito, we all have that experience of being part of that group project. Alam nyo ba, may nagkwento sa akin studyante a few, uh, a few weeks ago, kinwento ng studyante sa akin. Ang sarap na sana, alam nyo yung magkakagroup. po kayo magkakaibigan, yung pick your own group mates, tapos biglang yung isang grupo na yung, yung hindi sila pinili, kailangan nila ng isa pang kasama, eh yun yung mga hindi nagtatrabaho, hindi pumapasok, tapos ipapajoin ka doon. Alam yung pakiramdam na, ay ako gagawa na 90% ng trabaho. Ako, alam nyo yan, lahat tayo, we all have that experience of being in a group or sent somewhere na hindi talaga natin gusto. I-share ko lang yung kwento ng kapatid ko. Uh, my brother was a student of Tugigaraw City Science High School. Wala na siyang picture dito. Ayaan mo na yun. Alam na alam nyo na yung kagwapuhan nun. Uh, pero yung kapatid ko na yun, uh, I believe, nung pumasok siya ng grade 9, nag-iba siya ng section. Masyado niyang ginalingan nung grade 8, kaya na-promote siya ng section. Nangyari, pumasok siya ng grade 9, lahat ng mga kaklase niya doon, may kanya-kanya na silang barkada, may kanya-kanya na silang mga grupo-grupo. E siya sumali siya doon, wala siyang kasama na barkada niya galing sa dati niyang section. Buong year na yon basically miserable yung kapatid ko. Sakit ang loob niya kasi parang wala siyang, wala siyang mahanap na kaibigan talaga doon, parang sobrang outsider. So ang ginawa niya, sinigurado niya noong next year. <laughs> bumalik siya sa dati niyang ano sa dati niyang section. <laughs> Grabe no nagpa-demote pero by choice. Ayun pero lahat tayo we've all experienced being part of a group where we really didn't like our groupmates. Lahat tayo uh, meron tayong makilala ng mga tao na sobrang alam niyo yung halos lahat na ng pet peeves at red flags eh nahanap na natin sa kanila. Alam niyo yun. <laughs> De, hopefully hindi naman pero we all know these people that we'd rather avoid kahit na ano ako nung college namin meron akong ka- Meron akong kaibigan na pinili niya na lang mag-solo sa thesis kaysa ka grupo niya, yung mga grupo niya. Grabe, no? Pero alam niyan, there are people na kapag alam natin sasama sila sa lakad, ay hindi, eh, ano, iba pakiramdam ko ngayon. Oy, nag-iba bigla. Pero alam niyan, today we are going to look at the life of, kung kaya niyo pang basahin yun, ayos pa mga mata, ayan, at the life of Jonah. He is a person who was called to be sent to a group of people that he absolutely hated. Sobrang ayaw niya sa kanila. Pero ang makikita rin natin dito is the heart of the God who sent him. His heart for the lost, even those na ayaw na ayaw talaga ni Jonah. So let me invite you guys to stand. We're going to read a particularly long passage from the first chapter of Jonah. Uh, pero para hindi tayo maboring, sabay-sabay nating basahin. Okay ba? Okay, yan. Alright, let's, lead, let's read it together. Sabi, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid and each cried out to his own God and they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us so that we will not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. So they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. So they asked him, Tell us, who is responsible for making all this trouble for us? What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? And he answered, I am a Hebrew and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. This terrified them and they asked, what have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord because he had already told them so. The sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, what should we do? to you to make the sea calm down for us. 
Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, Lord, do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man, for you, Lord, have done as you pleased. Then they took Jonah, they threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Lord, thank you for speaking your word, Lord God, today. Lord, we pray that every single person who has come here will come will come out of this building knowing that they have been sent out for your mission. Lord, we pray that you will steer our hearts to not sit idly by while the waves and the winds of this world threaten the souls of those that we love and even those that we hate. We pray, Lord God, that we will come into our campuses, go back to our homes and our uh, hometowns, sharing the same heartbeat, Lord God, that you have for the lost. Lord, we thank you for your word. Anoint the preaching of it today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may now take your seats. Ayan. So, if you look at the life of Jonah, kita nyo sobrang ayaw na ayaw niya talaga. He hated those people, the Ninevites. Pero who is Jonah? Jonah was actually a prophet. Uh, he's a prophet living in Israel in a town called Gat Hefer. At ito, itong tao na to, ang only other mention niya besides sa buong libro na about sa buhay niya, uh, I believe nakita siya sa buhay ng isang wicked na king na si Jeroboam. At ang ginawa niya dito, nag-prophesy siya kay Jeroboam, the Lord is favoring you. Pero alam niyo kung gano'ng katindi yung mismong prophecy niya binawi ni Lord. Gano'ng katindi. Pero itong buhay nitong si Jonah, kung titingnan niyo, he hated these people, the Ninevites, so much. Pero bakit yun? Ang Gat Hefer, kung saan nakatira si Jonah, was only approximately 500 miles galing sa hometown niya. The city of Nineveh is only, yun, 500 miles away galing sa kanya. Pero alam niyo yung ginawa niya, bakit nga ba ayaw na ayaw ni Jonah sa mga taga Nineveh? Nineveh is the capital city of the nation of Assyria. At ang Assyria, kung titingnan niyo sa Bible, it's a nation na ayaw na ayaw ng Israelites dahil kaaway nila ito. They are idolaters, they were wicked. In fact, sabi nga kanina, di ba, their wickedness, na, nakita ni Lord yung wickedness nila. They were proud, they were a powerful nation that was conquering all of the other nations around them. So, kalaban sila ng Israel. Tapos sabi ni Lord kay Jonah, puntahan mo ang Nineveh sa mga kaaway nyo, mag-preach ka sa kanila so they will repent. Pero si Jonah, sa sobrang ayaw niya, kahit 500 miles ng layo, alam niyo ginawa niya, sobrang ayaw. 500 miles east, can we flash ulit yung picture natin? Nineveh is only 500 miles east of yung tirahan niya. Iba itong Joppa. 500 miles, pero ang ginawa niya, pumunta siya sa Joppa, which is, uh, hindi yan yung Korean na word, ah, pero ito, it's a coastal city. Ang ginawa niya sa Joppa, kinuha niya yung pinakamalayong pupuntahan na barko, pumunta siya 2,500, over 2,500 miles to Tarshish para lang iwasan ng Nineveh. Ilan sa inyo na try nyo yung nasa school kayo kapag nakita nyo yung kaaway nyo, parang kahit maglolongkat ka, basta lang hindi mo siya makasalubong. Natry nyo na ba yun? Ayan, alam mo yun, nakita nyo, ito yung best friend mo dati. Tapos kinuha niya yung crush mo. Mm, alam mo yun, as in, iiwasan mo talaga siya at all costs. Ganon si Jonah. Sa sobrang ayaw niya, sa Nineveh, sa mga tao ng mga Assyrians, he went as far away as he could. Alam mo yan, yung para lang iwasan, para lang makalimutan mo yung heartbreak mo, pupunta ka ng ibang bansa, ganun katindi. Ganun siya katindi. That is what Jonah did. Pero, when you look at God, Jonah saw people that he hated, but for God, he saw their depraved condition, and he wanted to send this prophet to preach to them and invite them to repent. Today, we are going to look at three truths uh, that we can glean galing sa passage na ito. Yung pinakauna is that the Lord is merciful. The Lord is merciful. How many of you are grateful that you've experienced the mercy of God? Ilan sa inyo, alam nyo, hindi kayo naging mabait buong buhay nyo. Alam nyo na, deserve nyo na mapanish. Pero God has been merciful to you. Ako, I know every single day, I don't deserve the goodness that I get to experience. Verse 1, anong sinabi ni Lord? The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Anong sabi niya, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. One of the greatest na pictures na ano, imagine nyo lang na 
Imagine nyo na meron kayong utang na sabihin natin, yung as in, hindi mo talaga kayang bayaran na klase ng utang. Sabihin natin, uh, 500 billion. Tapos pounds pa. <laughs> alam mo pa, paano mo babayaran yan? Pero inutang mo yun, tapos as in, alam mo na kahit kailan hindi mo mababayaran. Tapos ngayon, yung tao na inutangan mo, iniiwasan mo, ayaw mo magpakita sa kanya. Pero itong tao na to ngayon, binisita ka ang sabi niya, forgiven na yung utang na yun. Anong pakiramdam? Tinding relief, di ba? Can you imagine the relief of being forgiven something that you know you owe? Na ito talagang, you know na ito utang mo talaga pero napatawad. Nothing comes close to the relief and joy that comes from being forgiven. Alam nyo ba na all of earth's history, all of history is the story of the Lord's patience and mercy towards us. I believe my slide tayo dito. All of history is the story of the Lord's patience towards us. Ilan sa inyo, mahilig kayong maghintay? Wow, grabe. Siguro yung ano, hintay, hintayin ko siya. Hindi, pero honestly, gustong-gusto nyo ba yung pumipila? Gustong-gusto nyo ba yung feeling na parang, alam mo yan, yung k- kailan, kailan kaya ako magiging ganito? Alam nyo, nadadagdagan yung oras. Alam nyo, yung gusto nyo, yung course nyo, apat na taon lang, tapos ngayon parang pang ninth year mo na. Alam mo, hindi masarap maghintay. Pero that's the whole story of history. It's the Lord being patient towards us. From the very beginning of humankind's history, That is the display of the Lord's patience towards us. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9, ang sabi, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. The book of Jonah, may picture tayo dito, the book of Jonah is like a mirror. It serves as a mirror to all who reads it. It is a look into the life of a man who cannot understand how God could love his enemies. Ilan sa inyo, mahal niyo yung mga kaaway niyo? Honest lang. <laughs> Wala magtataas ang kamay, di ba? Lahat tayo, kahit nga minsan, kahit hindi kaaway, pero alam mo yung mga naaasar ka lang na klase ng tao. Pero tingnan mo ito, Jonah had every reason to hate these people. They were his enemies. They were, uh, they, were, uh, they were persecuting and hurting his fellow men. Pero makikita niya bigla, bakit mahal sila ni God? Why does God love them? The book of Jonah is a harsh mirror for all who read it. Pero ang pinapakita ng book of Jonah is that the Lord's heart is not only for those whom we find deserving, but for all who are lost to come to repentance. The heart of the Lord is not only dahil kung sinong pinakamabait, pero kahit kung sinong hindi deserve. Can you understand kung gaano katindi yun? Tayo, ang hirap nga mahalin kahit yung mga hindi nyo kilala, hindi nyo kaya mahalin, di ba? Paano si Lord alam na alam niya yung mga kasalanan pero mahal ka pa rin? Ganun siya magmahal. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Something we can never forget. God demonstrates His own love for us in this. Ano sabi? While we were still sinners. That's the way that God loves. Jonah was so filled with a sense of self-righteousness and entitlement that he could not understand that even he, yung pinapakita ni, na mercy ni Lord sa kanya again and again and again, na kahit na willingly nag-disobey siya, this is how God loves That's how God loves. These people who are wicked in your eyes, you hate them, you want them to be destroyed. God does not want them to perish but to come to Him in repentance. One truth that we should always, always remember every single day, you were loved and shown mercy when you least deserved it. Minahal kayo at pinakitaan kayo ng grasya ng Diyos nung hindi nyo deserve. So the question is, this is where it starts understanding the mercy of the Lord. Do you understand the depth of God's love and mercy towards you? Do you understand na yung pinatawad ni Lord sa'yo ay something na hindi mo kayang bayaran? Pag naintindihan mo yun every single day, you won't take it for granted. And when you look at others, that's the beginning. The Lord's heart is not for those who deserve it. He just loves us even while we were still His enemies. So the first truth that we can take from this text, the Lord is merciful. The second truth that we can take from this text is that the Lord called us to send us. May tanong ako sa inyo ngayon. Siguro pwede niyong i-share sa katabi niyo for the next 10 seconds. Anong gusto niyong maging last words niyo? Oh, kung alam niyo na in the next 5 minutes mawawala ka na, anong gusto mong sabihin? 
Oh, grabe, share nyo sa katabi. Huwag naman yung ano, huwag naman, <laughs> huwag naman yung matagal ko na itong gustong sabihin. <laughs> huwag, huwag naman ganun. Okay? Ayan, anong gusto nyo na last na command? Anong, anong gusto nyo yung last words nyo? Kapag kayo mawawala na, di ba kailangan mahalaga? Di ba kung alam mo na yun na yun, kailangan mahalaga. Hindi pwede na yung last words mo, pre, alam mo, matagal na yung in-order ko, Coke, pero actually mas gusto ko talaga Pepsi. Hindi, kailangan mahalaga. Di ba? Hindi pwede na basta-basta lang. When Jesus knew that it was His final moments on earth with His disciples, kung si Jesus, alam niya na paubos na yung oras niya, ang last words niya, mahalaga. Tama ba? Kung kayo alam niya na unti na lang yung natitira, yung sasabihin niyo, yung pinakamahalaga. When Jesus was about to ascend into heaven, He said these words. Look at Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. At ito, ito ang sobrang in-embrace ng victory as a movement. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Ilan sa inyo sigurado na kayo kung anong purpose niya sa buhay? Alam niyo kung anong gagawin niyo sa buhay niyo? Meron ba? May kaya ba mag-grace? Alam niyo na kung talagang para saan kayo? All of us, we've all had that moment in our lives where we were asking that question, Lord, sana ko lulugar. Lord, sa ang bansa mo ko gustong padalhin? Lord, pwede ba sa Korea? Alam mo yan? Lord, anong gagawin ko sa buhay ko? Okay lang kahit anong trabaho, basta kasama ko. De, de. Pero alam niyo yan, lahat tayo, we are so clueless about what to do with our lives. Especially at this season sa buhay niyo, na marami sa inyo, kahit na may course na kayong pinili. Alam mo yun, kahit pinili mo na yung course, parang hindi ka pa rin sigurado completely. O kahit pinili mo yung course na yan, alam mo ba kung saan ka magtatrabaho pagkatapos? Alam mo ba kung saan bansa ka pupunta? None of us are clear about it. All of us go through life asking that question, Lord, para saan ba ako ginawa? Pero titingnan nyo dito, the Lord already has a command. For all of us looking for a purpose, God already has a command. Go and make disciples of all nations. Meron akong tinanong once sa small group uh, nung nandito kami sa church. Uh, meron kasing nag-open about not knowing yung purpose niya, kung ano nga ba ang rason kung bakit siya nandito sa mundo. At tinanong ko sila, ilan sa inyo mahal yung mga magulang nyo? Kung nari sa inyo, ilan sa inyo mahal yung magulang nyo? Tapos ang kamay. Hopefully, okay. <laughs> yung mga mahal na magulang nyo, ilan sa inyo gusto nyo kapag nagkatrabaho kayo, matutulungan nyo yung pamilya nyo? Pare-parehas tayo nagtaas ng kamay. Ngayon, yung trabaho ba nagagawin natin pare-parehas? Hindi. Yung iba sa inyo, papasok na magiging teacher. Yung iba magiging engineer. Yung iba magiging workers inside of the hospital. Yung iba magiging doctor. Yung iba magiging RMT. Maganda lahat yan. Tingnan nyo, magkakaibang itsura niya. Pero the same ang purpose. To bless your family. Tama? It's the same purpose at the end of the day. The question is not ano yung purpose ko. The question is, Nandito ko sa point na to ng buhay ko. How do I live out this purpose to go and make disciples? It's a standing order. Nung sinabi yan ni Lord, hindi lang yan para sa select few, it's for everyone. Romans chapter 10 verse 15. How can anyone preach unless they are sent? How can anyone preach unless they are sent? If no one is being sent out into the world, who is going to hear about the gospel? Sobrang importante kay Jesus. Sa tingin nyo kung, uh, kung si Jesus magsasalita siya, yan, ano yung boses niya, kayang marinig ng buong mundo. Pero He designed it in such a way that He wanted people to hear about the gospel through flawed people like you and I. You look at it, repeated patterns in the Bible, how Jesus uses people who were once sinful, people who were rejected, people na, na possessed ng demons, na natatakot ang lahat ng, takot sa, ng lahat ng tao sa kanila, sila yung ginagamit to go back into their villages, to go to their workplaces, and to proclaim about the gospel of Christ. Napakatindi. Let me tell you about, uh, let me tell you about the story of the early days of victory in the Philippines. Every Nation Campus is part of, syempre, it, this is the youth arm of victory. In our very early days, nag-start po ang ating movement by uh, a missionary team from the USA coming to the Philippines, specifically sa Manila, dun sa University Belt area. At in the first few days, one person by the name of Ferdy gave up his life. He was a young engineering student who surrendered his life to Christ sa pangatlong araw ng mission trip ng American team na yun. At ano nangyari? Naiintindihan ng team na yun kung gaano kaunti yung oras nila. 
Alam nila na unti lang yung naibigay na oras sa kanila. In a month, they would have to leave the Philippines to go to Korea and do missions again. So in that little time, in that one month, they had to train yung mga estudyante who, follow, who gave their lives up for Jesus to also make disciples. Anong ginawa? Uh, Pastor Steve, na ngayon, uh, wag na joke na yun. <laughs> Pastor Steve, who was one of the members of that missionary team, kinuha niya itong si Ferdy, naglibot sila doon sa campus, at nung may nakita siyang estudyante doon, to train him how to evangelize or preach the gospel, sabi niya, lapita mo yung estudyante niya, syempre English, ah. go to that student and preach the gospel to him. He went to that student, siguro sabi natin, wala pang one week na kristyano siya, nilapitan niya, pinreach siya yung gospel sa kanya. That person was Mark Constantino. And I have a picture here of Pastor Mark Constantino, who is now one of the lead pastors in Victory Pasig. That one encounter, pinush lang siya, sinabi, lang, lang, naiintindihan lang ni Pastor Steve, every single one of these disciples have to understand that they also have to make disciples. That one decision led to this man becoming a great and wonderful pastor, matinding evangelist, sobrang passionate. This Monday, we lost Bishop Ferdy, pero yung impact ng buhay niya nararamdaman pa rin sa mga tao na naapektuhan. In fact, mga disciples niya, Pastor Dennis, Pastor Mark, naging pastors. Yung impact ng buhay niya by that one decision, understanding that he was called to make disciples. He, naiintindihan niya na yung purpose niya is not just to be a student, not just to become an engineer. When he followed Christ, naiintindihan niya, grabe yung pagmamahal niya sa akin, kailangan maipasa ko to sa iba. Every member is called to be a minister. Hindi tayo tinawag para lang ma-enjoy yung aircon dito sa building na to. Hindi lang tayo tinawag para lang makita natin yung crush natin every Friday or Sunday dito. Hindi tayo tinawag para ma-enjoy yung facilities. Hindi tayo tinawag para ma-enjoy lang natin marinig yung promises ng ni God. We are called to be ministers. From the very beginning of victory of every nation campus, the heart has always been, ito yung puso ni Jesus para sa los. Ito yung puso ni Jesus para sa mga nawawala, para sa mga walang pag-asa. Ito yung puso ni Jesus para sa mga takot na mabuhay, para sa mga ready na magpakamatay. Ito yung message ni Jesus. He cares about every single one of us and they will never know it if you don't preach the gospel. Our heart for every single one of us is to understand that we have been called to be ministers. Ang ministers, hindi pastors. It could be a young engineering student. It could be someone na hindi pa alam ko nung pipiliin na course. It's you and I. Ikaw na nakaupo dyan. Katabi mo. Kahit kanina pa siya nakatingin sa cellphone. Yung mga tao na yan, they have been called not just to enter this building and enjoy yung word ni God, enjoy the aircon, we have been called to be sent out and preach the gospel. We do not take the words, honor God and make disciples lightly. Pag pumapasok kayo, yung nakikita niyong words dyan, hindi siya joke para sa atin. We don't take it lightly. That's our purpose. We honor God. We make disciples. Kung tinatanong ka, anong purpose mo sa buhay, hindi maging doktor, hindi maging engineer, Pag inano ka, intindihin mo itong sabi ni Jesus, honor God, make disciples. In John chapter 4, verse 39 to 42, hindi ko na siya nilagay, pero this is the story of a Samaritan woman na ang dami yan nagawang pagkakamali sa buong buhay niya. Di ba maalala niyo si Jonah, iniwasan niya talaga yung mga taga Nineveh? Ang mga Samaritans din at the time they were being avoided by their by the Israelites. Sobrang ayaw ng uh, sobrang ayaw ng mga taga Jerusalem, taga Judah sa kanila. Pero what did Jesus do? Yung mga tao, yung mga disciples sa kasama niya laging iniikutan yung city na yun. Laging lang iniikutan. Pero si Jesus pumunta siya mismo, doon siya dumaan. And he met the worst of the worst. That Samaritan woman, he met her. Alam mo yun? Ayaw na nga siya ng mga kapwa niyang Samaritan, tas ayaw pa siya ng mga taga-Juda. Ang tindi, no? Sobrang rejected. But Jesus came to her. He told her everything about her life na nakikita niya lahat yun. Pinakita niya yung love and acceptance and mercy sa kanya. At ang ginawa nitong babae na to, she went back, she went to her hometown, she told the people, there's this man who told me everything that I've ever did. He might be the Messiah. And the people came to Jesus, they heard him preach, they asked him to stay. At pagkatapos nun, dahil doon sa shinere na story nitong babae na to, 
all of them came to believe and see for themselves, not only because of what she said, but because they personally encountered Jesus, their lives are forever changed. If your lives have been changed, ito yung natural na effect. Hindi enough na, ang sarap na si Jesus parte ng buhay ko. Hindi lang yan pang journal mo. Hindi lang yan para makita nila sa Facebook tapos mag heart sila. Hindi. The love and mercy of Jesus that you've experienced is far too great to not be passed to others. We have, we have experienced far too great a love to keep it to ourselves. So the last truth that we want to learn from this passage, the lost are on the line. Verses 7 and 8. Nung nangyari dito na they were casting lots, they figured out that it was Jonah, na siya yung rason kung bakit sila binabagyo noong time na yun. Ang sabi, anong gag- sino ka, anong ginawa mo? Saan ka galing? So what happened? When you look at this, this is the picture, Jonah disobeyed the Lord. In fact, yung ginagamit nga na term, di ba? He ran away from God. Pero sabi, there's nowhere that you could go to run away from God. Our disobedience to God's calling puts souls on the line. Our disobedience to God's calling puts souls on the line. Back in 2013, that's 11 years ago, Pastor Faith Santiago um, made this uh, statement na talagang pinaisip kami who attended Ignite 2013. Na yung sabi niya, every single second, someone is dying. Every single second, lots of people are dying. Every single day, lots of people dying. And how many of them are going to hell? How many of them are not experiencing the freedom that only comes, the eternal life that is promised in Jesus because Christians do not care enough to preach the gospel to them? How many souls are lost each day because someone didn't preach the gospel while they had the chance? Yung kinakanta natin kanina, maalala nyo, nagpawis pa nga yung mata ni ate Mel. That is our hope for each one of us. to share in the heartbeat of Jesus for the lost. So many souls are being lost each day. At ano nangyayari? Pagtitingnan mo si Jonah, ano nangyayari? Habang itong mga tao na kasama niya sa bangka ay natatakot na, mamamatay na, <laughs> natulog siya sa baba. He didn't care enough to do anything about it. Romans chapter 10, verse 14. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Paano nila malalaman kung sino si Jesus? Kung ikaw nakilala dapat siya, hindi mo sinasabi sa kanila. Paano nila malalaman na meron palang pag-asa? Kung ikaw na natanggap na yung pag-asa na yun, hindi mo naman siya share sa iba. Bakit tayo nandito? The lost souls are always on the line. Chip Ingram says, If you think your love for God is increasing, may picture tayo dyan. If you think your love for God is increasing, yet your love for the lost is decreasing, you are deceived. Can you read that? If you think your love for God is increasing, yet your love for the lost is decreasing, you are deceived. It's not possible na ine-enjoy mo lang alone yung relationship mo with Jesus na hindi mo makukuha yung puso niya for the lost. Kapag kayo, di ba yung isa sa nangyayari, yung isa sa observations about people who are married is that over time, they slowly become very similar to one another. Di ba? Or kapag kayo, ilan na sa inyo na try nyo yung, yung mga barkada nyo na nakasama nyo over the years, parang ngayon yung mga expression nila na pick up nyo na, yung mga bagay that they enjoy, yung mga interest nila, you come to pick it up as well. We come to reflect kung ano yung personality of the people that we let into our lives. If Jesus is a part of your life, it's impossible to not get His heartbeat for the Lord. So my question to you today, when the waves and winds of life come for your families, your friends, your neighbors, or even your enemies, ano ginagawa natin? Are we sleeping undisturbed while their souls perish? When the waves and the winds of life come for them, when they are under threat of giving up, when they are under threat of going to hell, of missing out on this great, great love and that great, great life that has been offered up for them, what are we doing? Okay lang ba sa atin na nangyayari yun sa kanila? Katulad ba ni Jonah, natutulog lang tayo habang sila ay namamatay? Verses 15 and 16, They took Jonah, they threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord, 
and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to Him. What does this tell us? The Lord is able to save whomever He wills and faith can rise up in the unlikeliest places. Gaano ka-ironic na yung nag-iisa na naniniwala sa Diyos dapat in this chapter ang siyang nag-disobey at ang nagpakita ng faith ay yung mga ayaw niya na tao. Can you imagine? The Gentiles were the ones who exhibited faith in the book of Jonah. God is able to display His glory and power to save through us when we obey His call. At that one action of Jonah na ano, sige, itapon niya na ako overboard. All because of that, nakita nila yung miracle and they came to believe in the Lord. We will only know how God will use someone if we allow ourselves to be used by Him. Let me share to you a story as I end. Uh, when I was in St. Louis, nung elementary ko, very first week ko sa school, I had a traumatic experience where I was walking through the hallways at yung isa na batchmate ko na taga-ibang section, kinwelo niya ako dun sa hallway. As in, imagine nyo yung bagong-bago kayo dun sa school, wala ka pang ano, tapos bigla kang kikwelyohin dun sa ano na akmain kang susuntukin. I never forgot it. For many years of my life, that became ano na parang, <laughs> natakot ako para sa buhay ko eh. Kala ko bubugbugin na ako dun sa hallway. And that person, I never forgot. He never said sorry, hindi nagkaroon ng any reparations about it. Until late last year, this very same person messaged me on Facebook. Somehow, naging friends kami sa Facebook and message, I know we ain't close. No? Nasa ano na siya ngayon? Nasa Canada na siya ngayon. He has a wonderful family and is part of a church. He's very passionate about Jesus. Sobrang love na love niya yung church niya, love na love niya yung pamilya niya. Kita mo talaga yung naging impact nang nakilala niya si Jesus. All those years ago, I could have never imagined that that person who did that to me would come to message me. <laughs> Nakita yung light ni Jesus, yung naging impact sa kanya. Ilang tao yung dinismiss na natin galing sa buhay natin, na pinili natin na siguro ito lang ang masarap share ng gospel, wag na itong mga to. Ilan sa kanila would miss out on a chance to follow Jesus, to discover a life with Jesus, all because we did not care enough to share the gospel to them. I'm thankful for the person who discipled this guy. I'm happy to call him a friend now. But how many people go through life every day that they miss out on this chance or this opportunity? Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. As we end, this is the heart of God. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. This is the heartbeat of God for the lost. Pag nakikita niya sila, hindi niya nakikita na sila ay tao lang na rebellious. Hindi lang na tao sila who are deserving of punishment. He sees them as harassed and helpless. Walang direction like sheep without a shepherd. That's who we all used to be. That's who we all used to be. And the call for us today, will we respond like Jonah? When the winds and the waves come, will we respond like Jonah? Or will we look at compassion and obey God's call to preach the gospel to the lost in our campuses, to our families, and even to those that we hate? May our heartbeat reflect God's own heartbeat. Let's all stand as we pray. With all heads bowed, lahat tayo, bow muna natin, mga ulo natin. Sara mo na mga mata. If you are here today, you might not feel like you're Jonah, pero maybe you're here and you know in your heart that you have not yet accepted Jesus into your life. And you, you've come to realize that you're here today. Dahil may nag-invite sa'yo, dahil naramdaman mo lang na tinatawag ka dito. And you feel like, Lord, I've been lost all my life. I now realize that I'm harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Lord, hindi ko alam kung anong direksyon ng buhay ko. Alam ko na nagkakasala ako at nagkakasala lang. I know that I have hurt you. If that is you today and you want to experience that salvation and you want to repent of your sins and give your life to Jesus, if that's you, is it alright to lift up your hand? Come on, do not be shy. It's okay. Lift up those hands and let me pray for you. I see those hands. I see those hands. That's right. Any more? Right. Today, the Lord is calling you home. Your Father 
is calling you home. So pray this prayer with me in your hearts. Lord Jesus, I know that I have sinned against you and I know that I deserve death. But thank you for coming into the world so that I could be saved. Lord, today I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I acknowledge that I have hurt you and I've sinned against you. But today, I give up my life and accept you into my heart as my Lord, my Master, and my Savior. Help me to live for you, for your goodwill, and for your pleasure. I want to live for you. I want to experience the life that you have won for me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may now put down those hands. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for the souls of these people. We know that heaven is rejoicing for the souls that are now to experience that freedom. Lord, thank you for loving us so much even to the point of death that you died for us while we were still sinners. Help, Lord God, these people who have now made the decision to realize that this day is the beginning of a wonderful journey with you. Lord, help them to be surrounded by people who will lead them in faith, who will help them to love Jesus all the more and help them to live lives where they will not need to sin again, but they will look to Jesus as their only hope for salvation as their only hope for all the days to come. And secondly, for every single one of us, can we just lift up our hands? I know that at some point in our lives, maybe at this very moment, the Lord is showing to us kung sino yung mga Ninevites sa buhay natin. Sino yung mga tao that we've written off. Those people that we hate. Those people na, you may not hate them, but when the waves and winds came for them, we were undisturbed. But the Lord wants to tell everyone, every single one of us today, I just believe that He wants to tell us, this is my heartbeat for these people. They are not people who are just deserving of punishment or judgment. I have been patient with them because I want them to experience the freedom that comes from repentance and accepting Jesus. So Lord, today, with all of our hands lifted high, Lord, help us to live lives, Lord God, that do not take your command for granted. Lord, I know that for the longest time, we may have written people off. Lord, we may have looked at it na parang itong relationship ko with Jesus, enough na kaming dalawa lang. But Lord, help us today to look at the loss the same way that you look at them. To feel, Lord God, to have that same compassion towards them to have compassion on them the way that you had compassion on them. To see, Lord God, yung mga pamilya namin na hindi enough na kami lang ang mga ka-experience ng freedom. Lord, kung paano dumugo yung puso mo sa kanila, Lord, wag mo hayaan na yung puso namin okay lang. Lord, help us, Lord God, to not reflect the heart of Jonah, but to reflect the heartbeat of God towards them. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that we will look at our classmates, Lord God, those who are being bullied, those, Lord God, who are experiencing hopelessness, kahit yung mga malalaki yung ngiti, Lord God, pero nasasaktan talaga sa loob. Lord, help us to see them as who they are in your eyes, as people that you love, as people that you loved enough to die for them. Lord, help us to look beyond the things that we hate about them and to see, Lord God, that these are people whom you love. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that we will not sit idly by when the waves and the winds come for the loss. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that you will step out in obedience. Lord, send me out. Lord, here I am and use me, Lord God. Lord, help me, Lord God, na hindi ako mahiya na i-preach yung gospel sa kanila. Lord, help me, Lord God, na hindi mahiya na i-invite itong kaklasiko, na itong kaibigan ko hindi ahayaan na mabubuhay na lang siya na puro ganito na lang, na hanggang dito na lang, Lord God, ang, pinaka, ang pinakahantungan ng buhay nila. Help us, Lord God, to see that we have been called for a purpose, that our lives are about your calling. Lord, help us, Lord God, as young as we are, bilang mga anak, mga estudyante, mga kaibigan, even kahit classmate lang kami or acquaintance in school, to not take these moments for granted. Lord, help us, Lord God, to be the beginning of a generation that will come to worship the Lord. We will not take for granted, Lord God, the life that you have given up for us. Your love has been too great for us to keep to ourselves. Help us, Lord God, to trust in the power of the Holy Spirit to preach the power of the gospel to each one of them. For that is your power for salvation to every single one who believes. Not by might, not by our own strength, but only by the Spirit of God. May we preach powerfully in this nation, in other nations, and to the very ends of the earth. 
And your promise to each one of us, you will be with us to the very end of the age. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. to die adopted us from darkness into light now I am safe within your loving arms and I can hear the yearning of your heart for the lost it beats it beats we can hear it calling Make our hearts beat and beat and beat For the sons and daughters For the lost it beats and beats We can hear it calling Make our hearts beat and beat and beat and beat with you strong and deep and uncontainable is your heart of love that beats for all the world for the lost it beats it beats we can hear it calling make our hearts beat and beat and beat for the sons and daughters for the lost it beats it beats we can hear it calling make our hearts beat and beat and beat and beat for the lost for the lost it beats it beats we can hear it calling make our hearts beat and beat and beat for the sons and daughters for the lost, it beats, it beats, we can hear it calling. Make our hearts beat and beat and beat and beat with you. Make our hearts beat and beat and beat and beat with you. Make our hearts beat and beat and beat and beat with you. sit down. Ayan. O diba, buong service nagpapawis yung mata natin. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> anyway, you know what? I remember sabi ni Kuya Mati kanina, yung question niya, bakit tayo nandito? O nga, no, bakit kayo nandito? Why are you here? And sabi niya din that you have been called to be sent out and make disciples. That's the purpose of our lives. We have been called to make disciples. To go and make disciples. So, palakpakan naman natin si Lord sa buhay ni Kuya Matthew. Okay, so actually, we have two announcements before our offering. Uh, first is church community. It will be on April 13, 9 to 12 noon. Uh, you have manuals which cost 100 pesos. So, sino pwede mag-enroll dito? Yung mga graduate ng Purple Book. Yan. You can go to this class and learn more about what, how we do church. Okay? So, we encourage you guys to enroll in our church community. Saglit lang to and masaya yung class na to. Okay? And then, the next one is for our Victory 40th 
conference, uh, may we watch this video. 40 years of victory. We are going to look back so that we will be reminded of what God has called us to do. We are part of that victorious army, God, that nothing, Lord God, will stop the advancement of your kingdom. You are the chief cornerstone. You are the one who puts us as part of this church. It's a metaphor of victory, a picture of people celebrating in the midst of all the calamities, we can still magnify your goodness. To praise God and to let their campus know that Jesus Christ is Lord of their life. I'm excited about the greatness of the love that we have for one another. He's called us to walk with our heads high and worship Him, not in shame. We will see a harvest of students, high schools, colleges, universities, that the kingdom of God has come and that freedom is made available to them. Diyan sa the previous conferences, doon namin narinig yung mga passionate preaching, patay kung patay, ganon. So I remember that uh, Ignite 2015 or 13 yata yun. But anyway, so for our students, uh, let's celebrate 40 years of God's faithfulness together for Victory Philippines 40th anniversary on June 27 or 28 at the MOA Arena. So registration officially opens. April 6 or 7. Ayan, meron dyan sa likod si Ate Ruth nyo. She will receive uh, our registration table there. Also, uh, June 28, that will be 6 to 10 p.m. will be our campus conference. So, we encourage our student leaders and interns to be part of this. Pag-pray nyo, pag-ipunan nyo. Ayan, let's believe God for this. This is, a, kumbaga, sobrang, ano, uh, you can really pray about it. Okay, so early registration is uh, until May 20 for students that will be 750 pesos per uh, run. So kung gusto nyo din mag-attend ng victory conference kasi hiwalay yun, earlier yung victory conference which will be uh, 1 to 4 p.m. ng June 28. Tapos yung campus conference will be 6 to 10. So different payment din siya. So if you want to attend both sa ating mga leaders and interns, just approach Ate Ruth, and then we will guide you through our registration. Okay ba? Ayan. So uh, for our offering, yan, this woman is a grade 11 student, uh, senior high from USL. Yan, this is so passionate in uh, the Lord. Yan, naks may, may pagkamot talaga ng mata. No? Nagpawis din ba yung mata mo kanina? Anyway, so let's call Joy Umukit. Hello. Good evening po. So, as I exhort you in giving, let me lead you to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 7. Remember this, whoever, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generous, generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. This verse this verse explains that giving should be done willingly, ge generously, and cheerfully. Whoever gives will also bless, be blessed gener generously. It does not matter how big of, a, of an amount we give as long as we give with a cheerful heart. Not because of the blessings that we will receive, but because of the heart that wants to share our blessings to others. And so, um, <laughs> short testimony lang. Um, I grew up with a mother that loves to give to other people without anything in return. So, as a girl, as a girl, as a student that uh, grew up with a mother that loves giving, I also adopted that kind of trait. And every, alam yung every time na I pass by someone who needs of money or kahit ka klase lang na needs na pamasahe ganon. Pagbalari na kompera pero minsan nagigilitin na ako na hindi ko sila kaya bigyan. 
Pero it does not matter how much of a help that you can give as long as even a prayer is a giving to them also or as also a help for them. So, yun lang. <laughs> so, let us pray. Lord, thank you for gathering us here this evening. Lord, thank you for blessing us with your word once again. I pray that every single one of us is here or anyone that has heard your word today. This evening, Lord, I pray that they'll be, they will be able to put to heart your word, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you will be remind. I pray that you will remind anyone that is suffering right now that you are always there beside them, Lord. Um, Lord, I pray that you are always there to accompany, to accompany us in our journey. And Lord, we know that you have sent us not only to know your word but also to share the word and let the word be known. We have seen most of you have seen most of us in our world, in our lowest times, and you have sent us to share that blessing, that miracle that happened that when we met you. And lastly, Lord, I pray for guidance and healing for every single one of us, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and physical. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And there are envelopes on, on your seats where you may write your prayer requests. And every Wednesday, we have a prayer meeting in the Blue Room. Lang po. And that's all. Thank you. Po. You make creation bloom Faith You make mountains move Power That shapes the galaxies Jesus You're our reality Generations will know that your love is sweet. This is life in the light of eternity. Let your joy overflow, show what we believe. Get up on your feet. Let's dance. We're caught up in your song of life. Your love's taking us by surprise. Nothing you do is as it seems. You surpass all the wildest dreams. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Grace, you make creation bloom. Oh, faith, faith, you make. You're our reality. Generations will know that your love is sweet. This is life in the light of eternity. Let your joy overflow, show what we believe. Get up on your feet. Come on, my God, y'all stand as we to worship. We're caught up in the song of life. Your love's taking us by surprise. Nothing you do is as it seems. You surpass all the wildest dreams. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, wonder struck. God, your goodness has swept us up. Compelled by love, we'll tell the world about what you've done. Wonder struck, God, your goodness has swept us up. Compelled by love, we'll tell the world about what you've done. Wonder struck, God, your goodness has swept us up. Compelled by love, we'll tell the world about what you've done. Generations will know that your love is sweet. 
this is life in the light of eternity let your joy overflow show what we believe get up on your feet let's let we're caught up in your song of life your love's taking us by surprise nothing you do is as it seems you serve us all the wildest streams hallelujah hallelujah tayong uh, campus gathering uh, can you just uh, look for the logo of your campuses and then we'll uh, just meet together God bless you all